current coaching commitments um, involve quite a lot. So on a Monday night, I do Wildcats for AFC Stoneham, which are girls only sessions to get them introduced to football. On a Tuesday, I coach my under 11 team. Uh, on a Wednesday, I have a night off, which is quite fortunate. <laughs> um, Thursdays, I coach my under nine group. Um, Fridays, I do my own bits and pieces with some one-to-ones and small group sessions. Saturdays, I take my junior Premier League teams, under nines and under 11s. And I also run a Saturday morning fun club for AFC Stoneham, uh, which involves, again, getting little kids involved in football from an early age. And Sundays, I do my grassroots matches uh, in the ED Missel and Tyro Leagues. Not a lot, no. So as most grassroots coaches, I got involved because of my son. Um, his team needed an assistant um, and I put my hand up as I'd be there at every training and match. So I thought, why not? What's the harm? And what is it now? Six, six years later, here I am spending most of my evenings coaching football. Um, so yeah, it, it was literally him, need his team needing some help really. And it's just evolved and progressed from there. I'd say one of the challenges I've faced is time. Um, I've been quite fortunate that I've recently changed careers and started working within a school, which has allowed me more time to plan my sessions and actually be more involved in coaching. Before I was in a sort of a 8.30 to 6.30 Monday to Friday job, that allowed me very little time to plan for coaching sessions. So I'll say the biggest, one of the biggest challenges early on was time um, and making sure I had time to plan sessions. Um, another one has admittedly been financial, getting my relevant coaching badges and finances and time for that hasn't always been afforded to me. Coaching aspirations, so I currently do an under nines and under 11s team um, and going back to my son previously, I did him up until under 12s. I'd like to take a group all the way through to under 18s and into adults football um, and I see my under nines and or my under 11s being that group because they are really good groups. Um, I would also like to be more involved in sort of diversity and inclusion within football. Um, Fortunately, one of the schools I work at is a, is a special needs school, and that's my current job there is, is working within a special needs school. Um, and I currently bring them here on a Friday afternoon um, and allow them to do some football. So getting involved in more diversity and inclusion programmes as well would be a positive. Massively important. Coaching is massively important to me. Um, I like the idea of being able to give children the opportunity to play football. Um, I like the idea of being able to teach them not only football, but life skills as well. Because I think that if you can set a positive example um, to them through how you coach, how you interact with their parents as well, um, they will see you as a positive role model. And I think that, you know, I've got a young group that I'm hopefully gonna take through and I'm hoping to be that positive role model for them. So yeah, very important. So the one piece of advice I would give, and there are lots of advice, but the one piece of advice I would give is get into coaching for the right reasons. Not just because you think that you'll guarantee your child more playing time or that they'll get preferential treatment. Get into it because you want to be that positive role model. Get into it because you are passionate about teaching children football skills, but life skills as well. That would be my one piece of advice.